I believe with my heart of hearts that making things is 10% skill and 90% confidence that you can get yourself out of problems when it all goes horribly wrong. That 90% is also what convinced me that buying this lantern at a secondhand shop to put a fairy in it would be an easy project and a good use of my time. Nothing's ever easy. I didn't know where to begin, so I just started pulling things apart. Keep busy and think. Lights. Lights. What are we going to do about lights? Good ideas reveal themselves at hardware shops. Walk until inspiration comes. Head torches. I had very little understanding of what I was doing putting this together. Just going off of instinct and testing things as I went, but it worked. The lantern needed to be watertight so I could suspend a fairy inside within a magical liquid. I used five minute epoxy for this. And then when that had holes in it, I used hot glue. Now we need a fairy. I wanted a monstrous fairy, something that would subvert expectations of what we think a fairy should be. No more hair. Not bad. The model I'm working with is a simple kit bash model I liked from my Nurgle Diary series that now I want to push further. The sculpting material I used is called epoxy putty. It's my best friend and it should be yours too. For problem solving and making stuff, this is my bread and butter. It's a two part compound. You mix them together, a chemical reaction happens and then it sets rock hard in whatever shape you make it. And it's bloody strong. I thought translucent wings would be an essential part of my fairy. That way the light of the lantern could shine through them. The tool I'm using for this is called a wood burner. This is my first time using this tool. I didn't know if it would work, so I just tried it. Moments like these are another thing to add to the bank in my brain of tools to problem solve with. I don't know when this knowledge will be handy again, but it's typically in ways I would never expect. For the painting process, I'm going for a beetle appearance, but with pale, human, fleshy features. I use colour shifting pigment powders in my paints to mimic a beetle's hard, iridescent shell. I also covered everything in a glow-in-the-dark pigment. Really had no idea if this would actually do anything, but uh, why not try? Might end up cool. I want my fairy submerged in liquid, but that's not very safe for electronics, so I'm using liquid resin instead. It starts as a liquid and then goes rock hard like plastic. Resin is a finicky beast of a material. It's very high risk to experiment with because if the resin pour goes wrong, it's hard to recover from. And it's also very expensive. For this resin, you have to pour it in 10 millimeter layers and you have to add just the right amount of catalyst. Otherwise, it will take an eternity to set or it will set too quickly and it will crack. And after pouring all night long. So sometimes when you're making things, it doesn't go according to plan. Uh, this is one of those times and I'm very annoyed about it. And so much has gone wrong. We're going to have to do our best to fix it and problem solve and work with what we have. Let's go do that. <laughs> That's making things, by the way. The reality of making anything that you don't know how to make is that it's going to go wrong and you've got to work out what you can do about it. And Fuck. <laughs> so there's four massive problems I don't know how to fix. So we've got to experiment and problem solve. Number one, it looks really cloudy. Number two, 
the flesh color turned bright yellow. Number three, really distracting layer lines. Number four, cracking, bubbling resin. The cloudy look after some inspection was just spilt resin. Some had cured, some had not. But after trying a lot of different cleaning chemicals, acetone is what removed it. And it looked way better. The skin color on the fairy I was once really happy with. But it must have undergone some sort of chemical reaction or reaction to the heat. And it's turned a bright Simpsons yellow. But it's trapped under resin. What can I do? Well, maybe we start with the light. Maybe we can tint them and make the yellow less obvious. Done a bit of a lighting upgrade. Purple cellophane, you probably won't be able to see. Still not happy with the result. The light upgrade does make the cracked resin and bubbles look more intentional though. So I can sleep easy with that problem. How about trying to get rid of those horizontal lines? Can we maybe distract the eye with some weathering? Um... Okay, this is a risky one, but I'm just gonna spray paint it and see what the finish is like. The layer lines were caused from pigment that I added and poorly measured. What I should have done is pour out all the resin I was going to use and tint that, and then break that up into all its different layers and add the catalyst then, that way I wouldn't have to. Anyway, hindsight is 2020. What do we have to work with now? All right, I'm really happy with the weathering, but when you turn on the light, the lines are still really visible. We need to do something really distracting. I thought maybe sculpting some big organic shapes on the lantern and on the glass would really break up the layer lines because it creates some dimension as well. While sculpting, I was thinking about that yellow skin and how much it sticks out and what could I do with it? What can I do? And maybe, maybe there's a story here. And like this, now the fairy is now the fairy queen of the bees. We couldn't change or distract from our mishap, so we own it, and we make it part of the narrative. I think that sometimes a project or a piece of art tells you what it wants to be, rather than what you thought it should be. And I think that's sometimes okay too.